Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Kelton Tech Solutions Limited Q1 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the first quarter of the financial year 2022. Before we begin, I would like to mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature, and such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made from the information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decision. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under, view, under review. Now I would like to introduce you to the management participating with us today in the earnings call. We have with us Mr. Niranjan Chintan, Chairman and Whole Time Director, Mr. Karanjit Singh, Chief Executive Officer, India, and Mr. Srinivas Mutluri, Chief Executive Officer, U.S. With this, I now hand the conference over to the management. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Q1 uh, 22 uh, earnings call. Uh, just want to start off with uh, first the numbers of what we achieved last quarter. Uh, and then we'll uh, uh, give some commentary around uh, those numbers, and then we'll take any questions that you might have. Uh, last quarter, we have, uh, uh, on a consolidated basis, we have, uh, uh, have a revenue of 204 crores, uh, with an EBITDA of 26.2 uh, crores, and a PAT of 16.3 uh, uh, crores, and an EPS of 1.7 crores. This, you know, if you look at comparable uh, quarter to last year, uh, the revenue was about 12.5% uh, higher than last uh, year's uh, the same quarter. Uh, EBITDA is about 3.8% higher, uh, and the PAD was 13.2% higher. Uh, you know, also, the e EPS also was about 12.6% uh, uh, higher. Now, coming to the standalone numbers, we achieved 25.8 uh, or 26 crores uh, revenue uh, with a, a, a PAD of... Uh, uh, of uh, 1.92 crores, uh, which uh, comes down to an EPS of about 20 paisa, is what it came down to for, for the last quarter. In addition to this, uh, we have uh, uh, 114 new, uh, new customers in this uh, last quarter. Uh, some of them have started producing uh, revenue already in this, in this quarter, uh, and some will start soon. Uh, so that uh, is a very high level uh, numbers around the uh, uh, you know, what we have achieved last quarter. Uh, with that, uh, uh, I would like to ask Karanji to briefly talk about uh, some of the customer wins that uh, we have uh, for the last quarter. So just to give you a perspective on uh, the different kinds of industries that you know these customers uh, span. Uh, and also this uh, uh, gives you some confidence as to you know uh, our uh, story that we are uh, telling and how successful we are in, in telling our uh, our story and what we are able to achieve. Karanjit, over to you. Yeah. So uh, I will just uh, give a brief about a uh, couple of customers. Uh, so we uh, we have one customer across uh, automotive, aircraft manufacturing, uh, real estate, a new age fintech leader, uh, you know, a human resource uh, services uh, company. Uh, as well as uh, an e-commerce technology company. Uh, to give you a uh, sense of the kind of work that we have signed up for, uh, you know, for an automotive, uh, uh, that's all an automotive company, we have been selected as the strategic technology partner where we are going to help them redefine the end-to-end -end, uh, user experience and uh, modernize their uh, uh, technical capabilities in uh, next-gen infotainment products. Uh, 
for the real estate technology company, uh, this is an interesting one. We are uh, we are going to help them build a block blockchain based enabled smart fund uh, routing system. Uh, what this will uh, it will help them make the real estate uh, transactions more uh, transparent and easy to track, and also help with the uh, smooth securitization of expenses as well as uh, you know do uh, fractional ownership using uh, this block blockchain technology. That's kind of what it enables. Uh, uh, the work that we are doing with the uh, human resource services, that it is all on the digital side. What we are doing there is we are going to help them build uh, a robust uh, organizational behavior influencing platform, uh, which will kind of, so these are all, you know, adding the new age features, uh, used to help them improve productivity, and uh, you know, uh, employee satisfaction and decision making uh, capability uh, using a lot of uh, behavior influencing uh, uh, kind of workflows. Similarly, for the e commerce technology company, this is in UK, uh, we are going to help them uh, build a revolutionary B2B e commerce and customer engagement uh, platform. Uh, that will basically help them with the uh, user experience and the drive higher sales conversions. Uh, so these are some of them. Uh, Srini, if you would like to talk about a couple of uh, wins on your side. Sure. Thank you, Karanjit. So obviously part of the verticals that, uh, that the U.S. market, the, that we have penetrated in the U.S. market and started new projects, uh, include uh, a large, the, probably the largest aircraft manufacturer in the world. Uh, we are working with them. Uh, they have selected us from a perspective of their uh, digital transformation services. Uh, we are helping them, uh, or basically their distribution services arm, to manage their core system integration. Right. So we 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 were chosen as strategic partners to manage integrations and communication between their core systems for better process management and information exchange. So this is more of a digital integration between their core systems, that is the, the infrastructure side, application infrastructure side. So this is a, this is a marquee win for us. Uh, we are excited about it. Uh, and then another marquee win uh, obviously includes a leading FinTech leader who is doing some innovative stuff in the digital transformation space. Uh, building uh, non-fungible tokens marketplace, a scalable ERC721 compliant, Ethereum blockchain-based NFT marketplace. So basically they're building payment wallets. Uh, they're building a non-fungible token marketplace. They're talking about uh, cross-country transfers of, uh, of cryptocurrency as well as uh, regular currency. And so on. So we are. This is this is a cutting edge technology space that we are uh, partnering with this fintech services company. And these are the two main ones uh, that that we have uh, started this quarter, and we are excited about that. Over Thank to you, Thank you, Srini and Karanjit. A little bit more commentary around the COVID impact for last quarter. Uh, while uh, the COVID impact uh, when it comes to uh, uh, our uh, delivery uh, was not there, uh, we did lose a, a few of uh, our uh, employees uh, for COVID and a number of, uh, I guess, uh, extended family of employees, you know, we did lose uh, some of them. But, you know, we were able to uh, provide uh, some help uh, by our Corona Warriors or what you want to call it, the Corona Task Force that we set up. Uh, they were able to provide resources for them during this uh, second wave of COVID, which impacted everybody. And uh, while we were uh, initially thinking of uh, coming back to the office uh, by May, June timeframe, and now we have deferred that uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the, I guess, the forecast that there could be a third wave. So all of our employees, or majority of our employees rather, are working out of uh, their houses. Uh, we do have some skeletal staff that is going into the office for uh, uh, the tech support people and uh, the, the critical employees that are needed in the office there in the office. While U.S. Uh, is uh, getting back to normal, 
Uh, I'll let Srini explain uh, what's happening in the U.S. side of, uh, of uh, uh, the employees, how we are uh, uh, going back to office uh, a few days a week. Uh, Srini, could you just talk about a little bit about how the U.S. is coming back uh, into office and uh, the impact there of uh, the customers uh, and what is happening there also? Sure, absolutely. So most of our offices, I mean, obviously we have offices in different cities. The main offices in uh, in the in, in the Princeton area as well as in the Virginia area, which I operate out of, we have in the past one and a half to two months started coming into work. Uh, we've taken all the all the protocols that are necessary, and uh, we are meeting two days a week. We we expect to expand that to three to four days a week in the coming future. Uh, no 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 untoward incidents. Uh, the transition has been good. Uh, people are adopting or adapting, coming back to work uh, and working together. Uh, it's great to great to be in that uh, mode. So all of our staff that are coming into the offices are uh, vaccinated, uh, and we are, we are we are considering all the procedures possible. From a consultant's perspective, that report into the client side. A couple of our customers have requested that August is the month that they are coming back into work, their internal employees, and that by September we need to make arrangements to ensure that our uh, our employees, uh, our consultants who are working on client sites, uh, will have to uh, will have to start coming as well. This is all obviously depending information we have with respect to uh, what is happening in the, in the COVID world. Uh, if things change uh, in the near future, then obviously these will be reconsidered. But those are the decisions. Uh, all of our uh, consultants that are going to be reporting into the client sites uh, in September are all vaccinated uh, and uh, they are ready to go. So travel has started. Uh, we have started visiting our existing customers. Uh, some of them have uh, are back in the offices. Some of them are still remote, but we were able to uh, meet them in either outside of their workplaces or whatever it may be. Uh, so things are coming back up to, they're not normal as yet, but there is a lot of activity. There is a lot of face-to-face -face meetings uh, that, are, that are beginning to happen. And uh, from my perspective, uh, I believe that in a month or two, we should be able to, to be fully uh, on site at our client sites and also in our uh, internal offices. Back Thank to you, you. Uh, Yeah, so a little bit related to the, uh, I guess, vaccination drive in India. Uh, we have whoever needed vaccination, we were able to provide vaccination for uh, our employees that are either in Hyderabad and or the Gurugam area. We are offered free vaccination to uh, any any employee that uh, uh, wanted it. We also extended that to the immediate family. So that is something that we have uh, done a few drives of vaccination for our employees. While at this time, since everybody is working from home, they are spread out. Uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, I guess, not able to provide uh, the vaccine to all the way down to where they are. Uh, but that is something that we are also considering. Uh, how best to make sure that our employees are safe and the extended family is safe. These are some of the steps that, you know, we are weighing when it comes to bringing back people to office. Uh, whenever that happens, these are some of the considerations that are going through uh, with, within the management as well as the, the task force that we have. With that, uh, operator, could we open up for questions? Sure. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may please press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. The first question is from the line of Hitesh Sharma from Sky. Please go ahead. Yes, would like to understand like the promoters holding has gone down by 3% and uh, uh, pledging has gone up by 0.83%. Any specific reason? 
and what will be the future forecast for the new business deals? Okay, thank you, Hitesh. Uh, we'll talk about first, uh, uh, I guess, the pledging. Uh, the pledging actually has come down. Uh, we have actually reduced our pledging. I don't know where you saw that the pledging has gone up. We moved from one bank to another bank. Uh, maybe that's what you're seeing you know, uh, when the pledging uh, related uh, uh, movement happened from one bank to one it was released and then sent, uh, assigned to another bank. But actually our pledge has come down dramatically. Now coming to the promoters uh, uh, selling the shares uh, or reducing the uh, uh, thing. So yeah, uh, just like we talked about the COVID, COVID uh, uh, has, uh, I guess, taught the importance of two things when it comes to uh, uh, in, this, in this pandemic. One is the health. Health is very important, which is something that, like we, I told you earlier, we are mindful and taking, ensuring that you know, all our employees are safe. So is the extended family, because we do believe uh, that you know, uh, the mental state of the employee is very important. Uh, hence the reason why you know, we have extended a lot of uh, uh, doctors on call, uh, whoever needed uh, mental health support, we were, we were providing that, all that related. The second one that, you know, I guess you know, has become very important in the COVID times is the liquidity. Uh, liquidity when it comes to the company as well as individuals too, right? That is one of the reasons why, you know, we, uh, the promoters have uh, divested some of the shares. Uh, more, more, it's, it's to do with liquidity just to ensure that, you know, uh, on a, uh, I guess, a cloud burst. Uh, lately, everybody's talking about cloud burst, right? We are okay when it comes to a rainy day. Uh, but we know we are not. We were not okay uh, when it comes to a flood or a cloud burst, and we want to ensure that you know the continuity happens uh, for the company as well as you know uh, uh, us as individuals. Hence the reason why you know some shares were sold just for the liquidity reasons. Yeah, that you asked. Yeah, last question you asked is about the forecast. Uh, yeah. Currently, we have about 600 crores worth of order book that is booked. Uh, so the forecast, you know, is looking much better than last year. We would do uh, 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 more than last year. Uh, uh, so hence, you know, uh, I don't want to give a number yet because we don't know what the COVID third wave impact is going to be. Uh, even though Srini has pointed out to you uh, that, you know, U.S. is coming back to normal. Uh, but at the same time, there is a worry there about uh, the Delta variant of the U.S. and the impact. Uh, right now, I think you are aware that you know the cases case load there is more than 100 per, uh, 100 100,000 per uh, day case uh, is increasing in US what is the impact for that you know we don't believe there's going to be an impact but you know because of the different variants right i don't want to project a number and tell you and then not meet but i can assure you that it will, it will be much better than what we were last year thank you thank you hitesh thank you a reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Pushkar Gupta, an initial investor. Please go ahead. Hi, Pushkar. Hi, everyone. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, congratulations on the number and sorry for the loss uh, due to COVID. So uh, uh, I have a couple of questions. So first one is, uh, so due to the new client wins, uh, does the company have to hire resources to deliver the project or, uh, uh, or the current employee strength is sufficient to deliver these projects? Uh, are we like uh, employing, uh, 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 providing multiple projects to an employee? Uh, in, in a way, or and also, is there a challenge the company is facing for hiring talent in US, U, uh, EU, and India itself? Okay, let me first start off with you know hiring, right? You know, to answer your question, we do not have too too large a bench, right? Uh, that is something that were uh, that that was uh, a night was was uh, I guess must have. Uh, but what happened lately is because I think you are aware, IT industry is very hot. Uh, the talent pool uh, acquisition has become a challenge. Uh, while we are working creatively to, to uh, uh, hire, train uh, staff, uh, we do not have enough people today to fully staff the new project wins that we have. So we have projected out also, I think you know, this is one of the interviews that I gave out, that uh, we projected out that probably about 400 people would be uh, is what we would be hiring uh, for this fiscal year 
to to support uh, the staff. I'm sorry to support the, car, the new customer wins as well as the projected growth that we we are anticipating that is going to happen. Now coming to your question about uh, the challenges of hiring, just like you know, uh, I guess everybody else in the IT industry, we are all facing the same challenges. Uh, so I'll let, I'll let Karanjit uh, talk a little bit uh, greater detail, but just to suffice to say, I'll just give you a broad highlight. Uh, is that you know where earlier we were? Uh, I'm just making numbers up just for discussion. Where earlier we were hiring close to 100, uh, uh, I guess freshers. Uh, uh, now we are increased that to you know by another 50 percent to hire 150 person, 150 people, uh, just to get these people up to speed and be ready for this new projected wins that we have, and also some of the things that we have in pipeline. Karanjit, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the challenges? And uh, I know you are part of an ASCOM, uh, uh, some of these uh, groups, so you can talk in general about what's happening in the industry too. Yeah, thanks, uh, Niranjan. Yeah, so, Pushkar, uh, you know, uh, uh, as Niranjan said, I mean, uh, these are all round challenges for, uh, for the IT industry. Uh, talent is becoming a big, uh, a big challenge to hire. Uh, initially, uh, you know, it was sort of, uh, it kind of hit us, but then now it's been a couple of months and we have kind of started organizing ourselves better and uh, coming up with creative ways uh, to deal with these things. But obviously, uh, uh, there are issues around uh, uh, it being very hot, uh, people taking offers and uh, not honoring those offers, uh, uh, you know, the expectations, multiple offers, you know, and all that. So those, those challenges are there. We are also facing them. Uh, just that we have kind of uh, now figured our heads around it and uh, come up with some creative uh, ways to improve the situation. It's not like, you know, uh, we'll be, uh, we're just executing better. Uh, and in fact, uh, this is something that gets discussed in almost every forum. Uh, that we are uh, you know, part of uh, nowadays, and uh, you know whatever initially it was only we were we saw it first time for ourselves. But when we uh, speak with our peers in the industry as part of some forums like NASCOM and all, we uh, you know it's 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 the same everywhere. Everybody is dealing with uh, everybody is dealing uh, dealing with. Similar challenges, some of them more than us, some of them a little less than us. And uh, obviously, you know, there are also uh, creative ways that people have figured out that get shared and we try to implement uh, some of those. But yeah, everybody, and every time we go there, right now the agenda, the first thing that comes up is about this, and the agenda pretty much gets uh, hijacked, at least in the first half, talking about. Uh, Talking about the challenges, the unprofessionalism, multiple offers, uh, people not honoring offers, and, and those kind of things. Thank you, Karanjit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's another question. Uh, half of it actually, uh, Srinivas uh, uh, answered in uh, the call uh, about the joining back to the office in the COVID times, but that was from the U.S. perspective. Uh, any any plans uh, to following any hybrid model for work uh, within India? What is the plan uh, and like what is the strategy to uh, manage the talent over within India itself? So, so to answer your question about uh, uh, back to back to office. Uh, Model. And ultimately, I think you know we will have a hybrid model for sure because that is where the industry is going. Uh, but at this time, right now, it is going to be remote for us. We are just waiting and watching uh, what's happening with the vaccination drive and uh, uh, the waves of COVID that is coming around. As you are aware, right? You know, uh, unlike uh, U.S., Indian uh, vaccination. Uh, as a percentage of the population, I know absolute numbers, we are doing much better than everybody in the world. When it comes to percentage population, you know, we are very low. Whereas U.S. has achieved, you know, uh, about 70% uh, uh, vaccination rate. And even, even though they had at 70% plus, you know, they are getting, you know, close to 100,000 plus cases every day. And they are expecting that it's going to get to 200,000 cases. So we are very mindful about the health of our employees because that is more, more very important for us. 
Hence, we are deferred that decision to a later date. We are going by quarter to quarter. At this time, we are saying it is not going to be this quarter. We will revisit this probably, you know, sometime in September to see if it is going to be, you know, uh, either by this before December or we're going to defer it a little bit more than December. But at this time, I don't have a, a, a solid answer for you to tell you or a solid date to give you when we'll be back. But it is going to be a hybrid model. How much of it is going to be work from home? How much of it is in the office? Those are things that, you know, it's too early at this time, uh, given the environment that we are uh, currently in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Shubham Verma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi, everyone. Shubham. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the number you people achieved. So it looks very good. Why and why? So. I was uh, I was having a question about European expansion because last investors call uh, we heard that you were talking about expansions in Europe. So are we on track to achieve the revenue diversification targets the company that company set for the EMEA year? Okay, thank you, uh, thank you for the question, Shiva. Uh, so we have hired a European head uh, who. Uh, comes highly recommended, and he used to work at the Wipro uh, as a European head too. And uh, we have hired him. He has come on board. He's uh, chalked out his plans. Uh, we are uh, discussing that on uh, uh, what it's going to be for this fiscal year, what it's going to be for next fiscal year. Uh, but you know, like I wanted, uh, uh, like I stated earlier, and I think probably one of the interviews where I said we want to get to 15% uh, revenue. Uh, 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 from Europe, uh, that is on still on target. Probably we'll achieve that in a couple of years. Uh, but, uh, so that is uh, something that you know is, is in the works. And as you also are aware, COVID has impacted in uh, Europe, and there are much uh, I guess stricter lockdowns still going on there uh, compared to other other regions. Uh, so uh, it is going to take a little bit of time. This year, you know, is probably going to be you know uh, uh, maybe one two percent more than what we achieved last year. Uh, but starting next year is when you know we we believe that you know the growth will be much better than it is uh, for this year. Uh, Mr. Verma, I think is done. So go on to the next one. Then. So we move to the next question. That's on the line of Hitesh Sharma from White Sky. Please go ahead. Hi, Hitesh. Thank you again. I just wanted to check up, like because. I see your enterprise solution and consulting business is small. I don't know how much of the attention it carries of yours. Why not focus only on the digital transformation? Okay, this is a strategic call, uh, management as a. Uh, so you're asking a question, why are we still doing those two, right? Yeah, so let me why ask. you are still continuing the two, three cross business? See, some, what happens, you know, what we have seen, right? Uh, in, in an enterprise, uh, uh, I guess, customer base that you know, we have, uh, we, there is a requirement for SAP. Uh, the uh, SAP is not going to go away. Uh, there are some digital integration related uh, activities that happen. That is, we're talking about the middleware kind of stuff. Right? Those demand is still there. And when we go to a customer, we don't want to say no to a customer uh, uh, so, hence the reason why we do a little bit of consulting kind of a, uh, of a gigs too. Uh, because what happens is, you know, like just like us, everybody has what we call the land and expand strategy. So when you say no to some customer saying, you know, hey, I don't want to do that, you know, uh, one uh, body that you want for Java, uh, what happens is he goes find some other, some other uh, vendor that is going to come and provide him that particular uh, resource. And so he has landed into our uh, customer, and then he starts expanding. He says, I can do this also, I can do this also, right? So this is a strategy that we have, uh, uh, I guess, thought about, and we said, okay, we do want to do consulting because we don't want others to land and expand. Now, when it comes to uh, the SAP kind of a stuff, since SAP is not going to go away, you know, that is going to continue on. Yes, 
SAP has come up with new ways of doing it. What they're calling is the digital. We are doing the digital SAP also, but the legacy systems is going to continue on and new implementations you know, is where most of the money is, but you know, some of the customers are still not ready to do a new implementations. They're saying, okay, hey, we want to move some of these uh, dates sideways uh, because we, we believe that you know, we are not ready yet or the pandemic, you know, we don't have people uh, that can do it. So these are some of the things that you know, we have in our mind before you know, uh, on why we do these uh, this, uh, this, uh, enterprise-related uh, uh, solutions. I know Srini will have a lot more uh, granular detail on that. I'll let Srini expand upon what I just stated. Srini, can you talk about why we still do enterprise-related uh, services to our customers? Yes, uh, I think it's a very good question. So it's a, it's a strategic reason as to why we continue to do enterprise work. So basically, uh, any ERP system connects uh, the entire enterprise right, with an organization. So you get to understand the business processes of the organization itself. And we have traditionally, or rather, we have, we have a, due to our acquisitions and the way we have grown, we do have a, a bunch of uh, existing enterprise clients. Now, if we need to do digital transformation with organizations, then this gives us a good base to land and expand, right? This is an existing client of ours. It would be easy for us to upsell and cross-sell any of the transformational services, the digital transformational services that we talk about. And also the enterprise landscape itself has morphed, right? At this point, you cannot say that SAP is not a part of a digital initiative for an organization. When organizations move from an ERP ECC system, SAP system to an S4 HANA system, it is considered a digital transformation journey. It is a transformational, transformational journey that the organization is going through, right? Just based on how the technology is evolved, uh, it, is, it, is, it is considered part of the digital landscape. Even when you talk of the integration services, earlier where you used to integrate uh, systems in, uh, in uh, data centers, et cetera, these days, it's all out. Cloud integration is part of the digital integration practice. And, and enterprises provide a larger revenue base. And it's important that if we want to expand, we need to show the expertise in all areas. Though digital transformation is the focus, and we have seen the evolution of enterprises move into digital space as well. And that is the reason, and that is where we are helping our uh, large enterprises uh, move forward in their journey. Uh, does that extend, or you want me to elaborate more? Uh, we also call it a Trojan House uh, strategy, for that matter. Like, and second was like I asked, like, who, what is the latest customer acquisition? I'm sorry. So your question is later. Latest customer acquisition. I think I, we did state that we have about 14 new customers, and uh, Srini and Karanjit gave a little bit of background of those uh, customers. Uh, so. Did we miss something there, Hitesh, that you're looking for? Pardon me? Did we, did, are you looking for something specific on the new acquisition, customer acquisition? Because I thought we already stated that we had, uh, we already discussed about the new customer acquisitions. No, no, we are only looking for the new customer acquisition in the, uh, uh, spe some specific, uh, which is going to, you said like 600 crore is your pipeline uh, customer acquisition, which is the biggest one in this customer life. Any marquee customer on that? See, I can't give the names out without talking to, uh, yeah, I, without getting control of the customer. Right? You understand, right? So, you know, yeah. So what, what I'm saying is, you know, this is something, uh, what we call the order book is what we have is about 600 crores. Okay, so about 80% of, uh, of uh, that order book is existing customers only. Uh, so we do have large customers, you know, all the way uh, uh, from uh, the largest logistical provider in the world to the largest banks of the world. So we, we do have uh, uh, customers like that. I know some of the name, uh, names that, you know, we have already listed out in our customers, uh, but, you know, I cannot give out specific on who exactly is providing that to us. Okay, thank you very much. 
Thank you, Desh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sagar from uh, BNY Milan. Please go ahead. Hi, and uh, very congratulations for the result. Uh, I had a question similar to most IT shareholders have probably. Uh, since our uh, overall, uh, the company's P is pretty low compared to the other tech industries uh, or the benchmarks around. Uh, are we planning to like onboard any institutional investors or FBI or something of those sort to really uh, enhance or uh, create more value to shareholders in general? Because I see most of the shareholding is either by the promoters or the public, which seems to be the retail investors. So uh, thank you for the question. You know, we have been talking to number of analysts, number of, uh, uh, I guess lately I've not talked to fund houses, but you know, we are talking to many customers, uh, many FIIs uh, for, uh, uh, I guess, you know, if they would be interested. And we, we have reached out uh, by our roadshows. Uh, we have uh, done uh, investor relations uh, uh, management. We have tried, you know, at this time, you know, for some reason we are not successful. We are not able to put uh, our finger on why we are not able to be successful to get some of these customers. Uh, it has become a, a moving target for us, you know, in some cases where they said, okay, achieve a certain number, come back, and when we go back, they say, okay, we need more, uh, things have changed, you know, all kinds of things that, you know, we keep here. Uh, but, you know, I have, we have not a, been able to, to identify what that is, uh, despite our best efforts, and we are continuing to try, and we have not given up. You know, we do want uh, to get, you know, uh, institutional players into into as a shareholder to, to uh, in, in our company because that gives uh, a brand recognition uh, by then. But as a brand recognition, while Kelton is known very well in the India space, we are doing a lot of brand-related marketing in the rest of the world, and we'll be doing a lot of new initiatives uh, very soon also. So all that you know, we are doing uh, and uh, coming to the valuation. You're right. You know, we are very undervalued, but you know. Uh, that is something that, you know, I, it's not in my hand. You know, you ask me anything about operations, we, uh, I would be able to, uh, to answer that. You can hold me accountable for that. Uh, but share price is something that, you know, is beyond my control. Uh, no, but thank you. We are happy to know that uh, we acknowledge that uh, the fact uh, as the management does that. Also, uh, a quick thing to host, maybe it's not be in my million, I'm in capacity as an individual investor, if you can just correct it later in the call. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Shubkam Verma from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, Shabam Verma, an individual investor. Your line is in Yeah, yeah. Thank Hi. You. Uh, uh, actually, Hi. my question was on the dividend side. So last time, company declared a dividend. So when are we supposed to get that one? See, the dividend will be paid out uh, right after the AGM. Uh, uh, we need to get uh, some approvals. You know, we have announced it. Uh, then we need to get approval of the shareholder. Uh, uh, shareholder approval has to happen, and we are going to get that at the AGM. And I think there is a set uh, time frame within which we have to uh, send out the money. And uh, we will be uh, doing that. We'll follow whatever the protocol defines that you know, we need to do. We'll be doing that. So it is going to be after the AGM is what it is. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Evan Paul, an original investor. Please go ahead. Hi, Evan. Uh, Mr. Paul, your line is unmuted. Can you please unmute yourself from the handset? Okay. Sorry, I was on, I was on mute. Um, so I missed the initial part of the call, so I don't know if you have mentioned it. But I just wanted to understand how is the pricing of new projects coming up? Are you able to price higher because of the... Uh, because as you, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the hiring is going up on the 
its cost of hiring new people is also going up so how are you seeing the margin in the next couple of quarters because i think um, we have seen cost of hiring in it is going up so are you able to price yeah, your project at a you you're right paul so we are having that tough conversation with the customers i let yeah. karanjit you know talk about and give you a little bit more information related to how we're doing and what we're doing when we're having these tough conversations with our customer karanjit can you answer that yeah so yeah given the uh, what is challenges uh, uh, you know wherever it's possible uh, we are talking to customers uh and basically speaking to them about uh you know redoing the commercials uh around the present realities and uh, for most of the uh you know so it's like it depends on customer to customer but uh, uh most customers uh, are willing to have a conversation now and uh, we've been able to uh, make some improvements there for the newer uh, for the newer business as well as uh, newer positions uh, we are seeing success on that uh, so the uh, existing business we just it on a case by case basis okay i have one more question <clears throat> sure right yeah, uh, i read uh, somewhere in one month back <clears throat> that uh, your new european uh, head will be uh giving out a new strategic plan you will be unveiling that plan very soon uh but since then i i i haven't heard anything from you yet so do you have any road map or strategic map road map about how to pursue your growth in europe now or is it still under discussion yeah this is still under discussion you know we will be announcing it in you know, a soon probably in a maybe some sometime next uh, next month is what uh, currently all these new initiatives are being being uh, vetted and you know uh internally and we should have that announcement you know, hopefully very soon so it will be made publicly right it will mean it will be made public yes correct okay fine and uh, just one more question i have that is quite generic uh, but management can answer it so what do you see as your competitive advantage over your competitors I mean that's some yeah. general question, but I just want to hear it from the CEO of the company. What competitive advantage sure. you you have seen your company? So uh, let let me let me let me start, and then I know currently uh, will be give you add more to that. See, we were born digital, unlike others, you know, where uh, they uh, they they branded themselves a digital company because that is where the trend was going on. You know, way back in 2009 when we started this journey, uh, I think you know 2012 is when we really Uh, became uh, a public organization uh, by doing a reverse merger we were born digital you know unlike others where you know uh, they saw the trend is happening and you know they said okay let's uh, 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 jump on the bandwagon uh, we started off uh, early days when you know uh, the, uh, the the smartphone was uh, uh, was uh, uh, okay blackberry was the smart smartphone then they were trying to do uh, digital on an analog phone uh we were uh, uh, had the highest level partnership with blackberry uh and then uh, we evolved from there then came iphone we evolved then came android we 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 evolved into that you know then claim you know cloud uh, uh then uh, social so we started evolving with the latest and greatest technologies and you know we have always been in the cutting edge space uh, and you know that's why we brand ourselves as bondage so we are also what we call ourselves uh, is you know we are nimble you know we are able to provide solutions you know within uh, uh, 6 to 12 weeks for the first mvp uh, and then you know we work with the customers and uh, come up with you know what would be the next next uh, uh, iteration of uh, the journey or the product that they want to do so very nimble and we are also now a public company so we just can't go away so we are uh, 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 nimble and we are also stable so those are the reasons you know uh, why we believe that we have uh, a much better competitive advantage and also since we started this journey in the digital space you know, we have very good uh, case studies uh, and you know referenceable case studies that you know customers are aware of uh, when we go somewhere and we talk to customers uh, uh, they know that we have done this it's not something that we're doing at ppt where 
uh, and also you know some of the things that you know that uh, uh, there is a recognition that you know in, if Kelson cannot do it, nobody can do it. So that is what we strongly believe in, and that's the reason why we believe that you know we are much better than our competitors. Karanjit, anything you want to add, Karanjit, to this? I think uh, I think Niranjan, you have uh, pretty much covered everything very well. Okay. Thank you, Karanjit. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nelson. That was uh, wonderful. I hope you can win more contracts and grow your revenue and profitability base in the coming quarter. Thank you. We will uh, we'll absolutely give it our best. Yeah, hopefully. I'm, uh, I trust you. I continue to hold your Thank shares. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to all the participants to ask a question. You may please press star and one on your touchdown telephone. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Niranjan Chintan from Kelton Tech Solutions Limited for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining our Q1 uh, earnings call. We have our AGM on September the 27th. Uh, we'll be sending the notification out uh, uh, very soon. Please uh, uh, save the date. Uh, we'd love uh, to be talking to all of you again. And you know we can do uh, much more interaction in, in AGM. Um, this time also we'll be doing it uh, uh, over uh, video conferencing. Uh, so we'll uh, be happy for uh, maximum participation, and you know you'll be able to understand, and we can get into granular details of how we do what. Because you know uh, the previous earnings, uh, previous AGM, we had very good conversations with you know with the shareholders where we were able to show and tell. Uh, some of the stuff that we do day in and day out and how we do it and why we do certain things. So look forward to seeing all of you uh, at AGM. Uh, and uh, if not, then we'll talk again uh, in the next uh, earnings call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Kelton Tech Solutions Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>